Block Rasta. Now today we're talking about the first IGP of police. Dan Parry is not the first IGP of police. You know that, right? Dr. Dan Parry is not. In fact, now the last foreign or British commissioner of police we had, my brother, my sister, was all the way from England, as you might know, and he was replaced by Kwame Nkrumah. Now, when Kwame Nkrumah became president of this country, he decided that it was time to replace the last British citizen to occupy that position as Inspector General of Police. This man was called Atta Lewin Alexander. Atta Lewin Alexander. In fact, he served the Ghana police from May 1, 1958. To the 8th of October 1959. In fact, so technically, he was the Inspector General of Police, Ghana. After independence, we still had the British serving as Commissioners of Police. The last one was Atta Lewin Alexander. And then Kwame Nkrumah said, Listen, if we truly must be called independent, then we must have our own. In some of these key departments and institutions. So he went for a man who later became one of his worst enemies. Today, that is the man we're talking about. He was coming all the way from Manya Krobo district of the eastern region, specifically from a town called Aframase. He was born on the 11th of November 1920. My brother, my sister. Coming all the way from Aframasi, his father was a local chief who was called Asafuache Majite the first. He had four wives and as many children as he himself couldn't count. Today, my brother, my sister, with all respect and honor, I welcome into the African history class the man who was born. Erasmus Ransford Tewia Majite, a.k.a. E.R.T. Majite. E.R.T. Majite, Erasmus Ransford Tewia Majite, was born on the 11th day of November 1920. And he was born in a pharmacy, right there in the Manya Krobo district of the eastern region. His father was a local chief by name as of Majite the first. His mother was one of four wives that Asafuache Majite the first had. And she was called Madame Agbeko Majite. My God, she was a round, beautiful woman who was full in front and full at the back. In fact, she was frontally elevated and blessed. And, of course... When it came to her back, her dorsal elevation was beyond measure, as a lot of Krobo women have. Oh my God, she was pretty. Her teeth were so white that any time she smiled, in fact, you only thought about the moon. What are you talking about? She was beautiful. And she was the favorite wife of Asafuache Majite the first. Now, E.R.T. Majite, who became the first IGP of Ghana, was the fifth of seven children born to Asafuache Majite, my brother, my sister. And interestingly, ah, 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 at a young age, the father took him to school. So he started his education at Abenimi. Or Benyimi was where he started his schooling. And in those days, it was a common practice to hand over your child to your younger brother or your younger sister. So he went to live with his father's younger brother. In fact, his mother's younger brother, his uncle, by name Mr. J.A. Okumado. 
He had his basic education at the Presby Junior School at Odumasi Krobo. And then he also went to the Presbyterian Senior Boys School at Banner Hill. Oh my God. And then he went to Umfasi Pim School. Jesus have mercy. Umfasi Pim School. He went. And we all know where Mfasi Pim School is, right? Students, Danakwama J. Correct, Cape Coast. When he completed, he went to Adisadel College. We all know where Adisadel is, right? Good, same place, Cape Coast, right? In 1940. So by the age of 20, he had already finished his secondary education. But he continued to Achimata College. And then, from Achimota College, he found himself at the University of Ghana, where he became very, very studious. He studied very hard, and he excelled with an inter-BA, intermediary BA, Bachelor of Arts. My brother, my sister, when he was 29 years old, he got married to Miss Vera Scales. My God. Your guess is as good as mine. Hear me now. When he finished the University of Ghana and grabbed an intermediary Bachelor of Arts degree, you know what he did? Listen to what he did. He went to Accra Academy here in Accra and started to teach mathematics and Latin. Ora et labora means you all know what Latin is. Ha, in my days, we, we, we spoke fluent Latin. These days, because we don't speak Latin anymore, I have forgotten my Latin. But I still remember ora et labora. Ora et labora means what? How many of you know that? Stop Googling. Stop Googling. How many of you know what it means to say in Latin? Ora et labora? Nobody. My God. If this was about Chelsea and about, uh, what's the other one? Uh, those teams. You would have told me everything. Ora et labora means work and play. Ora is play. Labora is work. <laughs> Just like labor. So ora et labora means, my mother used to say, uh, cook and eat. May she rest in peace. She used to joke with that. Ora et labora means, and a Dagati man was sitting in the class and said, work and eat. My God. Mm -mm -mm. If you see any Dagati in town asking, what's the meaning of ora et labora? You might end up saying, cook and eat. Because those people, they like cooking and eating dog meat and all that. Anyway, so the police career started after he came out of Accra Academy teaching mathematics and Latin. My God. And this happened in 1948, a year before he got married. He joined the police. Hey. He was in the police service. Giddy, 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 giddy. And he was one of the college graduates to join the police, the first ones. So they were so respected. In April 1957, just after the independence of this country, he was appointed superintendent of police in charge of the then Accra region. Mm, now it's greater Accra. And now they are trying to make another place greater Kumasi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the guns are not happy. I hope that no tribal issues will come out of that. We are fed up with all the, those things. So it used to be called Accra region. Now it is greater Accra region. In fact, he became the first African to hold such a position. Age. He rose to become the to become, I beg your pardon, the commi deputy commissioner of police. The following year, 1958, Nkrumah was pushing him. On the 9th of October 1958, Kwame Nkrumah, who was then the Prime Minister of Ghana appointed him the commissioner of police. Yes, commissioner of police. And he replaced the last British commissioner of police, Atta Lewin Alexander. So he became the first IGP of Ghana. Today, everywhere you go around the police, you will see his picture first. E-R-T-Majiti. 
And when you go to the police school, they have a, I think a circle. Is it a circle? Runabout, small runabout there that they named after him. It is there. Now listen to what he did. My brother, my sister, he served as the IGP. Mm. IGP. Now in January 1964, there was a man called Set Ametewe. Set Ametewe was all the way from the Volta region of Ghana. In fact, Kwame Nkrumah had promised the Voltarians that he was going to do something for them. And as that thing was delayed, today we don't want to go too deep into history. Hear me. Some of the Voltarians got angry. And you remember Afro Bede? Afro Bede, a.k.a. Kwamla Bedema, who was a minister in Nkrumah's government, had worked so hard in fact, to even bring about the Akosombo Dam and so on and so forth. He was the one who went to America and they did not want to allow him into a restaurant to even buy coffee because he was black. Bedema was a member of Nkrumah's government. But they fell apart. And a lot of Voltarians also fell apart with Kwame Nkrumah. So Ametewe was sent to assassinate Kwame Nkrumah in 1964, Nkrumah was just coming out of his office when Ametewe pulled out a gun. Listen to this. This is very important. He pulled out a gun and started firing at Nkrumah and shouting the words, Jimakpla, Jimakpla, Jimakpla. How many of us are in the class? Okay. All right. So what does it mean to say Jimakpla? Oh, really? Okay. Jimakla, Jimakla. It's almost like saying bastard. Disrespectful bastard. He fired shots at Nkrumah. But for some reason, none of the bullets hit Nkrumah. Until a policeman from the north jumped in front of the bullets. And took all the bullets in himself. In fact, he died on the spot. He was called Salifu Dagati. My brother, my sister, Nkrumah was able to chase the gunman, set Ametewe, hold him down, wrestle him to the ground, take the gun from him before the castle police service came and took him away. So, if you look at the pictures, you will realize that Nkrumah's body was all soiled with blood. But Salfu Dagati had been very, very brave. He died. Nkrumah went back into his office after lunch and started thinking. We normally have special police coming to take care of me here. How come today they have changed this person? The people who normally come here, I know them. Now, if there's going to be a new person here, why was I not informed? He quickly asked for the IGP to be arrested, and that was ERT Majite. Nkrumah was right. He suspected that he had been influenced. He arrested him, and this was when Nkrumah established what was known as the Preventive Detention Act. It was a detention that was supposed to prevent murder and killing and other such things in the country. So Nkrumah decided to replace ERT Majite and brought another person who later became his enemy too. And this one was called John Willie Kofi Harley. In fact, Nkrumah in, in his books wrote extensively about uh, these two people who became the IGP. And when Harley became the second IGP, replacing ERT Majite, Majite was sent to prison in the Preventive Detention Act. My brother, my sister, so when Harley came and took over, he misled Nkrumah a lot. He encouraged Nkrumah with the Preventive Detention Act and his own enemies. 
he told Nkrumah they were his enemies and arrested them. Even people Nkrumah did not sanction to be arrested were arrested by Harley in his new position as the IGP, making Nkrumah so unpopular. He even arrested people who the people loved and believed, including Nkrumah's own friends. J.B. Dankwa was arrested and locked up. He died in prison. Of course, Nkrumah knew about it. Akwa J was also arrested and locked up and many more. Today, we are going to concentrate on E.R.T. Majite. Majite, join hands with the enemies of Nkrumah and decided to fight him. And Nkrumah realized it. In 1964, he locked him up. But the new IGP who came was also in the hands of the people and the CIA. They were those who planned and finally removed Nkrumah in a coup d'etat two years later in 1966. Now when Nkrumah was released or relieved of his position as president in a coup d'etat, he knew that he had taken a good decision by removing Majite, but he didn't know about Harley. Harley was his worst enemy. He had put his enemies into the office so close to his jugular vein. Listen to what happened. The moment Nkrumah was overthrown on the 24th day of February in 1966, then came the so-called National Liberation Council, NLC. My brother, my sister. And when they came into power, supported by the CIA, my brother, my sister, they appointed Majite as the High Commissioner to Pakistan. Listen up. They freed him and sent him all the way to Pakistan as the High Commissioner. In fact, he left the diplomatic service in 1969, three years after Nkrumah was overthrown, and returned to Ghana and entered into active politics. He joined hands with Kwamala Gbedema, who had also fallen out with Nkrumah, and his National Alliance of Liberals for the 1969 elections, making him the member of parliament for Manya Krobo constituency from 69 till parliament was suspended uh, and political parties banned in 1972. So he was there for three solid years. Then Colonel Ajampong came overthrew the government of the NLC. My God. And there he became the head of state Aye, in, the, in the Second Republic. Bedemer's party had been banned. NLC had been cut off. My brother, my sister. And all the parties came together as Justice Party. And Mr. Majiti became their leader. The leader of the Justice Party. Can you believe that? All parties that had been disbanded, they all came together and formed one party. And it was called the JP. And this was the Justice Party whose leader was E.R.T. Majite. So he became the leader of the opposition from 1970 to 1972. He also served as the Council of State member between that same time, 70 and 72, in 1977, Achampong felt very, very threatened. In fact, Achampong, then a general and head of state, decided to overturn the uh, democratic process with the concept of a union government, which he called Unigov. ERT Majite was not happy about it including William Oforiata, Pauli, you all remember Pauli, Harry Sawyer, the bearded man, the man with the goatee, may he rest in peace. My brother, my sister, Victor Ousu, you all remember Bana Bana. No, no, Bana Bana was not Victor Ousu. Victor Ousu of the Popular Front Party. The symbol was the moon. How many of you saw those ones? Oh my God, times are gone. Albert Edubuahin was also part of it. General Afrifa G.K. Agama, who later became the Bank of Ghana boss, right? Sam Okujato and Obera Samoa were all part of Majite's movement that fought 
a champion. A champion's uh, concept of the Unigov. My brother, my sister. A champion arrested these people, locked them up. My brother, my sister. But he became so unpopular by 1978 that there was a palace coup that removed him. And General Akufu took over in July 1978. We are ending the class. We are ending. So Majite, my brother, my sister, after helping in the coup attempt to remove Nkrumah and did not succeed, but succeeded after two years, he was promoted alongside people like Nana Akufuado's father. And I'm talking about Edward Akufuado and the rest of them. In 1978, ERT Majite served as a member of the Constitution Drafting Commission. And there he was for the Constitution of the Third Republic. He was part of the people who did it. My brother, my sister. Ah, ah, ah. He joined us with Victor Ousu. And then they founded the Popular Front Party, led by Victor Ousu in 1979, and he became the main opposition party in the Third Republic. He also became a founding member of the present NPP, New Patriotic Party. So he had demonstrated enough that he was a man who was against Kwame Nkrumah and his policies. Today, my brother, my sister, we remember a man who has been well decorated in the army. A man who did not like Kwame Nkrumah. A man who was part of those who planned to overthrow a legitimate government. He was the first head of the Ghana police. He was commander of the most excellent order of the British Empire, CBE, in 1960. In fact, he also held the Congo Service Medal. Republic Commemorative Medal, the African Police Medal for Meritorious Service, Colonial Police Long Service Medal, Good Conduct Medal, Queen Elizabeth II Coronation Medal in 1953, Republic Day Medal, and the Adiyekote, Adiyekote, and that's a warrior title that they gave to him from Manya Krobo, where he came from. Today we remember the man and Damri Fadwe, Damri Fadwe, now, in the burden of knowledge, I ask you now that you know what we do do. Be an any or lay a mini or bafe, a zunda kagani, mezaka yini. Yea, papango bokai and fifia in yan lukai na wabana in webe den. Missy bana en webe abade. Bana en webe den. Lele and Jim and sing a bear kuni. Nache ye zunda kagani, mezaka yini. Yea, papango bokai and nun fifia in yan lukai na wo. How would the life? Of ERT Majite shaping your own life. How would this story shaping your life? In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? It's been the African History Class. And my name, Black Rasta. Oh,